Hello everyone, today we will talk about one of the very important topics in marketing and advertising. Topic is marketing mix. Let us try and find out in this particular class what is the concept of marketing mix and what are the components of marketing mix and how marketing marketing mix can be used to promote or influence the prospective buyers in order to buy the products of a particular company. So the entire strategy about uh, the use of uh, what is called as four P's, how, how to use all these uh, four P's and uh, in order to impact the prospective buyers, let us, let us try and understand uh, the concept of uh, marketing mix in today's class. In the beginning, we will try and talk about uh, the very idea of marketing mix, how the concept was evolved and who developed this particular concept. So the, the term marketing mix was coined by a person called as Neil Borden in 1953. What is this marketing mix? Marketing mix is a combination of factors that can be controlled by a company to influence consumers to purchase its products. What are these four important factors? These four important factors are called as four P's. And these four P's are product, price, place and promotion. The product itself, number one is product itself, number two, uh, the price of the product, number three, place, that is distribution of the product, and number four, promotion of the product. All these factors together uh, uh, influence the prospective buyers, influence the consumers in order to, okay, in order to make them buy your product, in order to attract them towards your product, in order to expand your, your product. In the entire marketing process or the entire marketing strategy, marketing mix is one of the very important uh, factor which, uh, which influences uh, the sales of a product as well as uh, in establishing uh, uh, the hold of your product in a particular marketing segment or in a particular segment. So what are these four P's? Number one is product. What is a product? We have already discussed what is a product in uh, one of the few uh, in a, in a few uh, in the past class in in one of the classes. A product is 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 an item that satisfy what a consumer needs or want. It is a tangible good or an intangible service. For example, tourism industry, hotel industry, tangible uh, goods. For example, motor car, detergent soap, eraser, razor, etc. A product can be something which, which is tangible or which can be intangible. A product can be physical or it could be, it could be a service like a banking service, a postal service or, uh, or uh, insurance service or tourism service, any other services that is offered by companies the experience for example an experience traveling experience is offered is, is a kind of service that is offered by traveling companies uh, so a, that is also a product a product can be usually when we talk about product product is something which is which is physical which we can okay which we can hold which we can feel through our senses something which is physical something which is tangible which which we can touch and feel is something called as a product. A product, for example, when we pay for something, when we pay certain money, certain amount of money to buy a product, why do we buy? In order to satisfy our need. There are two kinds of needs. One is physical need, another one is psychological need. Physical need is to satisfy our utility purpose, our physical purposes. For example, if you are buying a motorbike or motor uh, or automobile, a four-wheeler or two-wheeler, why do you buy this uh, automobile? You want to transport yourself from one place to another place. You want to travel from one place to another place all by your own. You and your family maybe want to travel from one place to another place in a convenient manner. So you, the utility is transportation. You want to travel from one place to another place. You don't want to take uh, public transportation. You want to have your own uh, you know, convenient uh, uh, time you want to travel at your own convenient uh, time so you you buy a vehicle in order to meet these requirements wherein you 
travel along with the maybe with your family members, maybe a family of four or a family of five, depending upon the size of the car. It could be a small car or, or, a, or a mid segment car or a big car. Depending upon the size of the car, you, you buy a car and you travel from one place to another place. The purpose is, is, uh, is to travel. The, one of the major objective is to satisfy your physical need. That is, physical need is, is to travel. Or the utility here refers to the traveling aspect, transportation aspects, aspect. So in comparison, in comparison, the psychological factor, you know, a product not just offers utility purpose, not just offer physical satisfaction, it also offers psychological satisfaction. For example, when you travel from one place to another place, if you are traveling in a small car, the kind of satisfaction that you get by traveling in a small car is, uh, you know, different from the kind of satisfaction you get while while traveling in a in a mid segment car or while traveling in a S, in an suv or while traveling in a 2000 cc vehicle or while traveling in a premium sedan vehicle so that satisfaction level is totally different even that car also takes you from one place to another place even a particular uh, motorbike okay it it takes from one place to another place a small bike, motorbike like uh, Hero Honda Splendor, for example, or uh, Bajaj Discover, for example, it takes you from one place to another place. So the utility is you are transporting yourself and your pillion rider from one place to another place, whereas that that serves physical uh, need of uh, uh, need of uh, the two people. But what uh, the when it when you are comparing this, uh, you know, the, this travel, this bike ride with a uh, bike ride of say Harley Davidson or bike ride of uh, KTM Duke or for that matter Pulsar 250cc or Bullet 350cc or 500cc this kind of uh, psychological satisfaction that you get in riding that particular bike in comparison with uh, riding a bus a bike like a Discover or a Hero, or a Hero Honda Splendor is totally different the level of psychological satisfaction the level of the amount of you know the happiness or satisfaction that you get from traveling in a in a bike like ktm duke or in a bike like harley davidson or in a bike like uh, like bullet uh, is totally uh, different from the kind of satisfaction that you get from any ordinary bike so psychologically also you are getting satisfied with the product so products, in, that is why products are designed for uh, segments, keeping all these factors in mind. Products are designed for requirements of each segments. Products are des designed for, for example, the need of uh, lower middle class, need of uh, a poor, uh, poor class, need of uh, middle class, need of upper middle class, and need of uh, premium class. So every product is designed to meet the requirement of uh, uh, these uh, these segments that is why mark a particular market is always uh, you know it is always divided into segments that that is what we call as uh, marketing segmentation based on the income market is uh, divided into various segments wherein you divide the market into uh, premium segment and then uh, upper middle class, middle class, and then lower middle class, and then below that. Wherein, uh, based on income, based on affordability of uh, the people to buy, uh, buy your product, you design your product to meet the requirements of all these groups. For a premium segment, you design the product in such a way that, you know, it is affordable, it is, you know, it is uh, desired by these particular segment where the super rich or the upper middle class or the middle class so your product should meet the requirement of all these segments that's why when it comes to products like uh, automobiles or when it comes to products like uh, um, fmcg for that matter so it is designed keeping these factors in mind so income is just one factor in marketing segment there are other factors also. There could be regional factor. There could be 
okay gender could also play a role and also age is also another important factor while uh, you know segment segmenting the market or dividing the market into various uh, segments so these are some of the okay factors which determine product design also so, so the product is designed keeping in mind keeping in mind about the factors like income factors like age and factors like region and factors like uh, the the uh, regional what do you call uh, preferences so all these things play a key role in uh, designing of of the product so product itself is very important that's why you although you have a say for example when it comes to fmcg that is fast moving consumer goods when it comes to such goods say for example you take the example of uh, of a bathing soap or a toilet soap a toilet soap comes in various quantities and these various quantities of uh, uh, product is uh, priced at different what you call different levels so for example you get a soap a dove soap for uh, 50 rupees also you also get dove soap for 10 rupees also so this particular product is packaged differently it is also marketed differently it is packaged and marketed entire promotion is done totally differently for each segment entire campaign is also designed for a particular segment so it, it depends on a uh, product design depends on these factors in fact all four p's product pricing place and promotion all these things come come together you know the the mixture of all these things determined by the various factors that we just mentioned like a marketing segment segmentation plays a key role gender preferences age and income all these factors plays a key role right from the designing of the product itself so the product so when it comes to the product product as we have already discussed it's anything which is which is a physical it satisfy a physical need as well as psychological need can be called as a product and anything which also offers services can also be called as a product for example postal service for example banking service icici for example it offers banking services to the people to its uh, consumers so it offers service so product could be anything which is physical as well as uh, anything which uh, which is uh, psychological can be called as a product uh, that's why when you talk about product we talk about not just product we talk about product and services so product itself a product itself will have uh, characteristics for example product can be classified in terms of consumer goods in terms of industrial goods and in terms of shopping goods and in terms of specialty goods so product is classified in these various uh, classification it, it is you know it is it can be product can be classified into these uh, these uh, under these headings for example when it comes to consumer goods for example consumer goods refers to food clothing and household items uh, ready made garments for example apparels for example food for example uh, lace uh, bingo parleji britannia okay such uh, you know consumer goods uh, then uh, clothing like raymonds uh, like aditya birla group groups uh, uh, you know van husen for example ridden taylor and household items so all these uh, you know products come under consumer goods and you have uh, industrial goods for example you, you you do you know industry do require uh, products like cement products like uh, you know steel you know product like uh, ready made doors handles and uh, you know uh, such uh, you know other material so they come under you know uh, industrial goods for example paint wall paint of course wall paint may be required by individual households also but uh, at large industries also require uh, such goods so goods which are specifically required by uh, industries uh, they are called as industrial goods uh, there are companies which produce uh, you know products 
for industries only that is what is called as b2b business to business so you produce goods only for certain industries that is what is called as ancillary industries for example an automobile industry is dependent on ancillary industry for example uh, these nuts and bolts uh, they and uh, mirrors uh, panels etc they are produced by ancillary industries and they in turn okay we'll have an agreement uh, with the company like uh, tata group of companies tata automobile company or maybe maruti suzuki so maruti suzuki will have an agreement with uh, with the vendor with uh, and that vendor will produce nuts and bolts for maruti suzuki and that vendor and that uh, small scale industry is called as ancillary industry so automobile when it when it comes to automobile industry it is dependent on range of ancillary industries in a similar way when it comes to construction industry construction industry is dependent on various other companies like uh, cement manufacturing company steel manufacturing company doors windows window panels tiles then what not so you have uh, you know a particular industry which also offers uh, opportunity for other industries also so such uh, you know industries which uh, produce such products are called as you know such goods are called as industrial goods and you have uh, convenient goods or what is called as fmcg goods wherein such goods which we, these are the goods which we you know purchase very frequently for example it gets over very quickly goods are that gets over very quickly and we we may need it again and again for example goods like toothpaste products like toothpaste bathing soap detergent soap washing powder okay such goods are bought every very frequently every now and then you have to you have to buy these product even for for example even products like uh, dairy products like cheese like butter uh, you know, yogurt such products are uh, you know b- bought very frequently even food products like ice cream chocolates biscuits energy energy drinks fruit drinks flavored drinks etc that is food industry the products which which are produced by food industry and uh, products which uh, meet our daily requirement they are called as fmcg products or uh, convenient which can be called also called as convenient goods and uh, something called as shopping goods shopping goods are those goods which are purchased after consider- considerable considerable you know time after giving considerable time and you also compare with with uh, other products which are there in the market before actually buying this particular product so you go to you go to a certain extent you you spend a lot of time lot of time in uh, in buying this particular product you go to a particular shop go to a shopping mall you just uh, don't buy you know in in one shop you go to a particular shop and again you also go to another shop and compare it when it comes to such products usually products like uh, apparels and uh, furnished home furnished furnitures home furnishing products like furnitures okay they are uh, you know they and also consumer goods like uh, electronic goods like television refrigerator you don't go to one shop and uh, you know buy it uh, in that particular shop only you just first make a visit and uh, visit to one or two shops you compare the prices you compare the product compare the features and then later you make a decision and then you buy the buy that particular product depending upon various factors whether that particular product is uh, you know better in terms of feature in terms of price and also in terms of uh, additional benefits like discounts uh, or rebates that is given by uh, the companies uh, in with regard to this particular product so it depends on uh, various factor you take a lot of time before you actually buy this products and there is also something called as specialty goods the specialty goods are shopping goods that you give extraordinary time while buying this particular product you are you are even prepared to go to a different place altogether 
and you are even prepared to pay higher amount to put this to this particular product these are the product these are the premium product uh, such products you you don't buy every very often you, you rarely buy these products or once in a once in a lifetime or twice in a lifetime you buy such products such products are called as specialty goods so for example certain home appliances like air conditioners refrigerators such products you know you don't buy every now and then you buy say for example uh, refrigerator you don't buy you know frequently you buy once you buy a particular refrigerator it runs uh, it runs for at least uh, it lasts for at least 10 years so you don't again you know buy this this product in in another one or two year you you take at least 10 years or at least uh, you know more than five years before you actually go for buying another refrigerator so such products are called as specialty goods even for such products you you take a lot of time before actually buying this products so product can be classified in in this manner also and there is also product hierarchy where you know where the product can be classified in terms of uh, you know uh, family of product wherein for example soaps and detergent uh, toiletries, cosmetics, okay. Cosmetics is a, f a family of products. Under cosmetics, you have uh, products like face cream, face wash, uh, then uh, moisturizers, such products. And uh, you have toiletries like, uh, you know, uh, bathing soap, like uh, shampoo, such products are called as, uh, you know, uh, toiletries. So you have uh, family of product product can also be classified in terms of these uh, you know classification and in marketing mix another very important p is price we have all we have discussed we have just discussed about product let us try and discuss about price price is anything or an amount which a customer pays for the product and the price is very important so the pricing of the product depends upon various factors. What are these factors? The so pricing of the product depends upon the product itself. Number one, the quality of the product or what kind of a work has gone in producing this particular product. What kind of investment that is made to pr produce this particular product. Not just this product, the range of uh, products that your company is producing. It takes into account uh, the, the investment part it takes into account uh, the, the production cost, investment cost, production cost, and uh, packaging cost, marketing cost, distribution cost, and uh, promotion cost. Of course, marketing involves all these things. So it takes into account all this factor. The pricing of the product is based on this factor. Okay. What is the quantity of the product? What is the investment that is made on uh, producing this particular product and um, uh, what is the quantity of the product or the quality of the product okay and uh, how much you uh, you know the company has spent in uh, packaging this particular product branding this particular product and in marketing in uh, in other words in selling this uh, in this particular product in setting up the process of selling this product it is marketing this particular product uh, the kind of money the company is uh, investing in um, uh, distributing this uh, product that is establishing the distribution network I mean for this particular product or brand uh, and uh, what is the uh, promotional cost for this particular product so all these factor takes into account uh, while uh, you know the price is determined okay depending on the elasticity, elasticity, depending upon the elasticity of the product, it will affect the demand as well as sale. While determining the product price, while arriving at the pricing of a particular product, various strategies are used by companies. Some of the strategies can be discussed uh, here. One of the strategy is market skimming price. Another one is market penetration price. And another one is neutral price. What is this market skimming price? Market skimming price is when the product is is launched new in a particular segment. When you are come when you are coming out with a new product, 
and launching that product in a market in a particular market uh, you usually go for a lesser price you try and the company try and you know offer that product at a, at a lower price in comparison with other competitors if there are other competitors uh, competitors in the market already so you are comp the, the this particular company you know uh, it uh, arrives at a lower price in comparison with other pro product in order to other competitors in order to get the attention of uh, the consumers in terms of quality quantity it is this product is similar to you know other product even if it is similar you promote in such a way that it is better than the other competitors in without taking names of other competitors uh, you know products you try and uh, promote it in such a way that your product is better than other product other products in the market in terms of quality but in terms of uh, you know price your product is you know priced at a lower lower amount in comparison with other you know products in the segment so usually if in order to capture the market if you are launching a new product usually you offer discounts you offer you know your product for a lesser amount what is what you call it as for example some companies uh, you know call this as uh, introductory offer okay while launching the product for limited time period you offer the product at a, a lower price for a limited period of time that is a, for launch of you also call it as launch offer when you are launching new automobiles new bike bullets bicycles etc or electronic and home appliances or uh, consumer goods like like uh, electronic goods like mobile phone or smartphone for limited time period you offer uh, you know uh, your product for a lesser price so this strategy is called as market skimming price wherein wherein you want to capture the market when there are already established players in the market you want to capture the market so that's why you go for market skimming price and market penetration pricing market penetration is pricing is also you know similar to what is called as market skimming price market penetration pricing wherein you keep your product price of the product very low because the the goal of the objective of uh, uh, your company is through this particular product is to get into the into the market make a place for yourself in the established market go to the new okay places uh, in the established market okay that is what you want to penetrate you want to get into into the market so you usually go for lesser price what is this getting into the market means getting into the market it, it means already there are established players in the market already there are established products which are identified by the consumers which which are very popular in the market okay and this product is also available in in the in, in that particular region or in that particular market so how do you establish yourself in the market you either come out with a better quality product or if your product is similar to the existing products you offer your product for a lesser price so in in that sense you, you by playing that particular strategy you, you try and uh, you know capture that particular uh, market for example uh, geo is a classic example in indian case the geo geo telecom service provider okay the the geo of reliance you know when they launched this particular service so they launched it for a very lower price and their uh, you know the pricing was uh, so so low they off they offered almost uh, you know at a very you know throwaway prices in comparison with established players like reliance like like airtel vodafone um, yeah, mtnl bsnl such such uh, operators established operators were uh, already there in the market and in order to capture the market in order to penetrate the penetrate the um, penetrate the market geo came out with a strategy of offering uh, the the services for uh, lower price so, so by keeping uh, you know the service 
uh, at a lower lower price that is data service or uh, uh, you know at a very lower price uh, price geo came out with uh, this uh, pricing strategy in order to capture the market and they they are very successful uh, by using the the strategy and they've made it uh, big in the uh, already established telecom market and geo is one of the leading uh, uh, telecom service provider in the country right now and one of the major strategy one of the, the strategies that is used by geo is uh, you know is offering the services at a very low cost so you come out with such strategies companies like geo i mean reliance can afford to offer uh, their services at a lower price but when it comes to standalone companies okay they find it difficult but companies uh, which have which will have presence in various other segments uh, in the market uh, if they are doing well in other uh, industries uh, even if they are losing money in this particular uh, business they won't mind because other industries will support support this particular industry in, uh, you know uh, they can other industries will sustain this particular business and the company will can withstand even if it is making losses for a shorter duration of time but once you capture the market okay once you expand the market once you become the market the leader of the market definitely uh, you know you will uh, start uh, uh, making revenues even in, in this particular business but when it comes to small uh, standalone companies, not small companies. When it comes to sp standalone companies, a company which is, uh, you know, involved only in say telecom business, they will find it difficult. For that is why a company like BSNL, for example, uh, it, which is a PSU, which BSNL, you know, involved only in telecom business. Of course, Government of India, which is funded by, which is managed by Government of India. So BSNL could not withstand uh, the, the onslaught of companies like uh, Reliance and Airtel. So BSNL is making its way out, whereas the GEO is, you know, becoming the marketing leader. One of the strategies, uh, strategies uh, that is used by Reliance, I'm not appreciating Reliance, this is, I'm just uh, making a making it clear that uh, it is one of the strategies that is used by uh, Reliance uh, while promoting their uh, telecom service uh, geo in order to make uh, penetrate the market. So the pricing, what is called as uh, market penetration pricing is a strategy which uh, is very often used by companies in order to establish, launch their product as well as in order to penetrate the market and another important strategy is neutral pricing you i you 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 know go for neutral pricing wherein you keep your uh, the, the price of your product in comparison comparatively similar to other existing product products in the segment so that's why if you go to any sh okay any kirana shops or go to any general stores any malls you compare a product okay or like a bathing soap or you compare any product for that matter of a similar quantity the pricing will be similar why companies go for neutral pricing so companies do not want to take the risk of keeping a lower price and making losses and company do not want to lose out to other companies by other products by way of making you know keeping the product price at higher cost so if you are keeping the product at a similar cost, then uh, you know the the consumers will decide which product they want to buy, and definitely your product will have presence in the market. Definitely there will be com consumers who would be preferring uh, your product, would be having uh, you know preferences which is more suitable to your product. So they they will definitely buy. So neutral pricing is uh, one of the uh, key strategies in in pricing so product and pricing these are the, these are two important piece in the marketing mix another one is place place refers to distribution of you know distribution network of a company so every company will have a distribution network or a distribution uh, a process 
to which they sell their product. So whether it is automobile company, whether it is FMCG pr product, whether it is uh, the, uh, the automobile product, whether it is consumer goods, whether it is uh, home appliances. So for, for every product, so you'll have a distribution, companies will have a distribution network and also service network. So see, one, once you sell the product, that is not the end of it. So after you sell the product, you also have to offer services for that particular product for any wear and tear, for any repairs, etc. If you have uh, established such service center, then your product, the, you know, then uh, the brand value or brand equity of your product will will uh, grow more, and uh, consumers will become, you know, will prefer your product in comparison with other products. If you have service centers established in every region wherever you are selling this product, if you have service net network in that particular. Uh, region, then consumers will definitely prefer your product over other products. That is exactly why uh, Maruti Suzuki is one of the most preferred, uh, you know, brands when it comes to automobiles in the country. Because one of the key reasons is is they have a service network throughout the country, even in small towns, even in second tier cities and third tier cities. They have service network all over the country. That's that's exactly that's one of the major factors why consumers buy Maruti Suzuki along with the pricing. Pricing is also affordable. Uh, another important factor is uh, the service network. Service ne network is very important, of course. So we are talking about distribution uh, network. So all companies, okay, when it comes to a particular product, they will have a distribution uh, network. Okay, they would have established a distribution network through which they sell the product. Companies do not directly sell the pro their products to the consumers. They will have an uh, 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 have a setup wherein so from the factories they sell it to the agencies, established agencies, and through established agencies to wholesalers and through wholesaler to uh, retailers and through retailers to consumers. So uh, when it comes to FMCG products, for example, this is the kind of system uh, you know that that is uh, you know that exists in the market. Automobiles, automobiles will have uh, you know dealerships. They will have very very rarely they have their own uh, you know factory outlets, but uh, usually they will have uh, you know dealerships and through their dealership, they sell it to the consumers. When it comes to FMCG products, of course, some companies will may have factory outlets. Some companies may have their own um, you know, shops, like for example, Raymond's, I mean, for example, Aditya Birla Group may have its own uh, uh, factory outlet. Uh, for example, a company like, uh, you know, um, company which involves in textile business, they produce the product, and they sell the products. That is that is what is called as, you know, factory outlets. So, but uh, companies will uh, usually go for uh, this kind of distribution system, wherein you, uh, you know, identify agencies, and uh, to these agencies you sell your uh, finished products to these agencies for a particular uh, uh, region, and though that particular agency will distribute uh, your product to wholesalers who are there in that particular region and through their wholesalers each wholesaler will have uh, his own network of uh, retailers or uh, shops and he will sell it to these retailers and those retailers will in turn sell it to the consumers so this is the distribution network so companies will have uh, uh, depending upon the product uh, the, the nature of the product and the range of the product uh, uh, the distribution network is uh, established. So the third P is called as place, and uh, uh, the most importantly, uh, the fourth P is called as uh, promotion. Promotion refers to the uh, promotional activities, uh, consorted promotional activities uh, run by uh, the company, uh, where it could be outsourced or it could be in-house uh, promotional activities run by 
and the company in order to influence the prospective consumers uh, to buy your product prospective as well as existing consumers in to to uh, make them buy your product so promotional activities is a very important activity in the marketing process so it is not just enough to produce the product it is not just enough to you know um, price the product uh, you know uh, in a strategically it's not just enough to establish the distribution network it is also very important to um, uh, promote your product make your product visible in the market uh, make your pro product uh, you know be identifiable in the market by the consumers consumer should be knowing about your product knowing the names of the names uh, names of your product, tagline of your product, brand name of your product, before they actually go for buying, uh, you know, any goods or services for their uh, specific needs or wants. So it is through promotional activities that you carry out all these things. So the promotional activities involves what is called as a promotional mix. Let us try and understand what is a promotional mix. So promotional mix is a combination of uh, uh, advertising, public relation, personal selling and sales promotion. These five important activities put together called as promotional mix. Advertising is uh, uh, one such activity and public relation, personal selling and sales promotion. Advertising, what is advertising? Advertising is as uh, as we understand, it is uh, any paid form of non-personal, okay, selling of product information is called as. According to American Marketing Association, advertising is defined as any paid form of non-personal presentation of ideas, goods and services by an identified sponsor. It could be in any form. It should be paid and it is non-personal presentation of idea that means uh, the producer will not come out and uh, you know promote his product it is usually non-personal the not the producer not the owner of the company some some model will sell the product some model will tell about the product so it, it could be any paid form of non-personal presentation of ideas goods and services by an identified sponsor. This, so say if, if something has to be called as advertising, it has to be in, uh, it could be in any form. It could be in any form in the sense it could be a jingle, it could be a TV commercial, it could be um, advertising copy, or it could be out of home advertising, or tra like transit advertising, billboard, etc. Could be a leaflet, could be a pamphlet, it could be anything. So it could be in any form but it should be paid by a particular company and it is also non-personal it is not personal some nobody is selling personally that means a company which produces the, the product the owner of the company doesn't sell you directly it's not personal selling it is non-personal presentation of ideas goods and services goods and services refers to products ideas refers to uh, you know promotion of uh, public causes like public what we, what we what is called as public service advertising so ideas it could be ideas goods and services by an identified sponsor so in the advertising there should be an identified sponsor the company name or logo or tagline should be visible in any advertising if it is tv commercial it should be visible either in the beginning or at the end if it is advertising copy it should be placed somewhere in the advertising copy okay if it is not placed then it is not advertising it it is something else it could be okay advertorial or it could be uh, public relation material but not advertising so if, if something has to be called as advertising it should be paid by an identified sponsor it is non-personal presentation of ideas ideas goods and services and this presentation could be in any form it could be in any form also so, and what is this public relation public relation refers to any promotional or publicity activity okay which is carried out by the company in order to 
keep the image of the company you know good in a particular environment so you carry out activities in order to keep a good image in whichever uh, the place you are uh, established uh, if you have established your company or industry so public relation is such a, such an activity public relation also involves media relations uh, relations with uh, with uh, uh, local public relations relationship with the government relationship with uh, uh, local representatives localites relations uh, relationship with the media so public relation is is an activity wherein you keep okay cordial relationship with all these publics all these uh, you know groups of public different groups of publics so public relation is also a paid activity is also what you call a marketing activity it is a marketing function of a particular company wherein you carry out certain activities in in uh, you know through your company okay uh, in a particular place because your company is placed in a society in a particular society so you have to respond to the needs of that particular society that's why companies okay if you are uh, you know if you have established a factory in a particular location uh, you also try and establish uh, uh, facilities uh, to your employees as well as extend that those services to uh, the general public who are uh, you know residing in that particular region for example uh, you establish a public school and you also extend the services of that public school not only for your employees but also for general public you establish health center establishing of health center establishing of uh, public school um, sponsoring uh, events like local events like uh, rajyotsava or such uh, you know other events and sponsoring events like uh, hmm, wherein you promote uh, students uh, who have uh, done well in the exams like in uh, cet or in sslc or in poc you offer them awards by instituting awards okay you try and do such activities these are uh, the the kind of public relation activities if say, there are any events in that particular Uh, within the vicinity of your company or with the vicinity of uh, your industry you try and uh, make yourself visible so this is called as public relation activity public relation activity is usually any publicity okay uh, uh, activity which is carried out uh, carried out by the company which this is also paid but uh, okay this may not be uh, visible or this may not go out like a campaign uh in, in like a multimedia campaign that advertising uh, you know will will go so in comparison to, with the advertising advertising okay will once the advertising is ready it will be published everywhere but public relation is specific and specific to certain needs and it is you know, usually carried out in the within the vicinity of uh, uh the company where it is uh, placed or established and also public relation is also an activity wherein you have a good relation cordial relationship with uh, the 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 public various publics that you encounter you okay make contact on a day to day basis and uh, th- the third one is personal selling personal selling is you you employ uh, sales persons in order to promote your uh, you know product in order to sell your product so usually in the distribution network you have a established distribution network along with the distribution network you also employ okay in in that distribution network certain sales executives or sales uh, persons in order to go for their door to door selling of your product uh that uh, you know that is one of the promotional activity that you carry out even though the consumers may not buy your product they will be you know able to identify your product if you go door to door and in personal selling the consumers usually may end up buying your product because of uh, the presence of uh, the individual okay the individual can convince uh, the consumer to buy your product even if the consumer is not buying the consumer may identify your uh, you know product much better already you are uh, the, the brand is visible in the market through mass media campaign multimedia campaign advertising campaign along with that if the they say if uh, your product is also 
and uh, going to the doorstep uh, of the consumers. So it, it makes more uh, identifiable and your product might become more popular. So that is one of the strategies that is uh, part of promotional mix. And another one is sales promotion. The last one is sales promotion. All companies go for sales promotion, okay? It could be seasonal sales promotion or it could be product launch offer. It could be offers and discounts and rebates. These are the you know uh, strategies employed by companies. Okay, you if you if if a consumer is buying, for example, in bulk, say you want to buy one soap. If you're buying one soap, say for example, the cost of one soap is forty rupees. Okay, if you're buying uh, the four soaps, the cost goes up to. Uh, 160 rupees but uh, if you're buying together you may get it for 120 rupees so that is a kind of sales promotion companies do by you know packing it up in a pack of four they sell uh, the same product in a pack of four and they offer 10 rupees or 15 rupees or maybe 20 rupees uh, sell it for a lesser price okay but if you're buying one product the price is more if you're buying two the price you will get a small amount of dis discount if you're buying four products you may get more discount so usually uh, the fmcg product go for such strategy this is one of uh, such strategies and uh, you know, when it comes to automobiles these offers are you know given uh, giving offer is also one of the strategies in sales promotion wherein yeah, when if you are either you are launching launching the product or either that financial year is uh, coming to an end usually companies will give offers okay it could be exchange offer or it could be offer given to corporate sector offer game given to government servants such uh, you know offers are given to um, specific uh, groups this is also one of the strategies of uh, sales promotion so sales from through sales promotion companies you know sell their products these are these are the combination of uh, promotional activities that is carried uh, carried out by the companies in in brief so uh, th all these five activities put together is called as promotional mix so marketing mix is a combination of four important factors. So in this class, we have discussed about four important factors which comes under marketing mix. And four important factors are product, price, place, and promotion. So product refers to the, the product itself, or the quality of the product, the quantity of the product, the research that is that is uh, that has gone behind uh, behind uh, the making of this particular product so product and the price price uh, is the pricing strategy and the factors that determine pricing we have discussed about these aspects and uh, place place refers to the distribution of uh, the product uh, the the entire distribution process or the system of uh, of uh, you know selling this particular product or promoting this particular product by the company that refers to the place and uh, very importantly the fourth p refers to promotion and under promotion advertising is a very important activity and along with advertising you also companies also go for public relation sales promotion personal selling activities uh, you know, all these activities uh, together contribute in, uh, you know, promoting and uh, selling a particular product or in marketing a particular product and making, uh, you know, the product visible in the market. So these four P's play a very important role and these four P's are called as marketing mix.